Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hey, can we make a shout of praise for Jesus? Amen, amen. Thank you, worship team. Guys, you may be seated. Amen. Welcome to Rise Church. For all those uh, online gathered with us today, thank you so much uh, for choosing Rise Church. If you're scrolling and you see this live feed, uh, please stop on it, click on it, and see what Jesus is doing uh, here at Rise Church, what he's doing in Abilene, Texas. Amen? Amen. How are y'all doing this morning? It's not tonight. It's this morning. Amen? Amen, guys. Uh, my name is Jubal, uh, Jubal Elrod. Most people call me Jubilee, and cops get my name wrong, but it's okay. Today, I'm just here to lift up one name that matters, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Um, so with everything that's been going on, you know, uh, I've been seeing a lot that's been going on in the streets, the violence, the accusations, um, the protests, everything that's been happening from ones that have been peaceful to ones that have been violent. Amen. I'm sure everybody's been watching the news lately. I don't like to watch a lot, but when I go to the gym and I go to random places, I see flashes of what's going on and I see how the world is. And sometimes I'm like more than grateful that I'm in a men's home and that I'm secluded from these things, right? And I'm able to just take cover in the Lord and I'm able to look at him and say, thank you, Jesus, that I'm covered in your blood this morning. Thank you, Jesus, because Jesus is not about division. He's not about uh, color. He does not have preference. He loves every single one of us. He loves you just the way that you are. Um, he's not here to segregate or divide. That is of the enemy. And if anybody's out there causing division, they need prayer, they need love, and they need to know what unity is. Amen. Um, there's some topics today, guys, that I want to talk about. Um, they're pretty serious topics to me, um, honestly, and I feel like it's, it's something that God has really put on my heart for you guys. I don't think the Lord speaks to me too much. Sometimes he pops up and he gives me random names in my head, and I put people on discipline, and sometimes he pop up and he puts me on discipline, and I hear from the Lord, amen? Sometimes that's a couple weeks, sometimes it's a couple months, and uh, I, I try not to take the discipline of the Lord uh, lightly, as Hebrew, Hebrews like to say, and I think uh, us coming to church, sitting down, just taking his covering, it's us kind of putting ourselves on discipline, Amen. So let's discipline ourselves today. Let's get into the word of God. Let's hear what Jesus has to say for all those who are online. Um, I just pray uh, abundant blessings over you. And I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you cover this place with your blood, with your love, with your unity. We rebuke division. We rebuke the enemy right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I, play, I pray, Lord, um, that we don't play around today, God, and that today we take your word serious. We understand what the Bible is saying is complete truth, God, and we take that truth to heart. Lord, I pray that these, these men will be able to go home and cover their wives, um, cover, cover their girls, Lord, cover their homes, um, cover everybody, their children in prayer, Lord, and they'll be able to truly apply what you have for them, Lord. I pray that today I'm able to uh, speak a word, Lord, and that you just anoint my lips, direct my feet, direct my path, Father, and, and give me peace today, Lord, and give, give this congregation and my family the peace in their heart uh, that they need, Father. We call upon your name today, Jesus, no other name, Father. It's only through you, through the Son, that we can get to God. So we raise your name and we lift it today. And all the saints said, amen, amen guys. So the title of uh, my sermon is called Fully Covered. I don't think God's a God of halfway. I don't think he's ever been a God of halfway. God's never completed a quarter of one of my prayers. He's never half clothed me. He's never gave me one shoe that was left and one shoe that was right. He's never just gave me half a tank of gas. My God is a God of overflow. He's a God of abundance. He's a God that's here to not just bring you half of a word, but a full word today. So I promise you, you're not just gonna leave with half the spirit of God today. You're gonna leave with the full spirit of God moving on your life and anointing going over you, amen? Amen. So fully covered, guys. I'm just going to dive right into my first point. When, when I hear about a covering, I think about shelter, right? You think about refuge. You think about rest. Um, you probably think about um, a, a cover over your car when it's hailing so uh, your, your windshield doesn't get hit, right? And you, you're going to have to go and take cover. Amen. So sometimes the first step to being fully covered is that we're going to have to learn that taking cover is going to have to be the first thing that we do. So my first point, if, you, if you're taking notes today, if, you have, if you're flipping through your iPhone and you're flipping through the pages of your Bible, because we don't use Androids here at Rise, I got you, Pastor. Don't worry. Carrying on the legacy. I want you to uh, flip to 1 Peter 5.5. 5. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. This is really important. I love this scripture. I think it tells us immediately why we need to take cover and what we need to cover ourselves in. And I think the first step truly, the first step truly to taking cover is that we're going to have to get low. Amen. When soldiers are out in the field, the battle's going on, bullets are flying, panic is going amongst all the people. The first thing that you have to do to take cover is what? You have to get low. Amen. 
1 Peter 5, 5, and the word of the Lord reads, Amen. Amen. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, cover yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. Amen? Amen. I don't know how long I was resisted. (laughs) It felt like I was resisted half my life. It says, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. Does, Does it say clothe yourselves and polo or Gucci or Versace or, you know, uh, even torch or rise apparel. It doesn't say you clothe yourselves in any of these things. It doesn't say all oh, the ripped jeans because we're holier than thou, right? It doesn't say to clothe yourselves in the thing. It says clothe yourselves in humility. And thank God, thank you, Jesus, though, that Adam and Eve decided to grab a leaf one day. Amen? Because they finally got to clothe themselves. But what I want to talk to you about is the first step to taking cover is that we're going to have to humble ourselves. Today you woke up, you had breath in your lungs, Today you woke up, you probably had a bed, you probably had a cup of coffee, someone that you could call, text, you got on social media, you got to see blessings in life. You got to probably open up your Bible today and truly understand, I get to read my Bible today. There's countries out there, people who don't even get the opportunities that we have. If it's hot in here or not, if it's cold in here or not, if the lights are working, if not, I'll praise Jesus Christ in the dark if I have to. If that Bible, if the Bible's not lit up, I'm going to be lit up in the room. Amen. With the spirit of God, we're going to have to humble ourselves, but it says clothe yourselves. And every day you're going to have to dress up. You might have your button up on, you might have your pants on, but what are you spiritually wearing? What are you spiritually putting on every single day? You might change your shirt every day, right? But that sin, that compromise is still underneath. It's still inside. It's important what we're going to have to clothe ourselves in, guys. That humility is being humble. So when it says uh, younger, um, when it says younger, uh, who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. All you older folks, it doesn't mean that you just get a pass on this one because it means spiritually, spiritually younger. If we have elders in this church, any leaders that are in this church, doesn't matter if you're 80 years old, 90 years old, you're 100. I've seen people come in here with wheelchairs before ready to receive a word, ready to serve, shaking people's hands. Beautiful, beautiful. I remember at our old church. We would have to pick up the people in the wheelchair, right? Because we didn't have a ramp yet. And they said, I don't care. I'm coming back next week. You can pick me up and take me down the stairs. I'm ready to receive a word from God. Amen. That's, that's, man, we got this woman, Donna, in the crowd. Man, this woman calls me like five times a week, guys. She said, when are you going to bring that sermon over? Where's my USB flash drive? And I couldn't load the file. It was too big. And we were trying everything that we could. And she, she doesn't bug us. She's persistent. She's consistent. She said, I want to hear a word from God this week. I'm ready to go to church. Ross family, where are you at? And, and I don't know if y'all can see Donna, but she's that beautiful lady right there with her hand up. And I just wanted to honor her today. This woman came seeking a word today. And that's what you need to be doing. But if we don't get under authority, like God placed in our lives, if we're not able to take cover and get low, because when you've accepted Jesus Christ, right? I'm just kidding. Rise church as your place and you become a member here and you're ready to serve. You're ready to get into the word. You're ready to maybe go to life groups and start serving this place. You're going to have to get under authority for some things. And sometimes it's not always easy. You know, you have to listen to people. They tell you to pick up this or take the trash out or we're only going to have this many people in life groups at this place or this location. And it can kind of be hard listening to people. Even with the younger leader, I'm, I'm sure it's super hard for these guys sometimes Uh, to listen to stuff that I asked them to do. You know, you go from being 50, 60 years old to listening to a young and asking you to do things and then vice versa. You were never able to listen to your dad your whole life and now you have a grown man barely in the home asking you to do things. But we respect the authority and the God-given leadership that he's placed in our lives and we just listen. I realized one day I woke up and I had two ears. I didn't just have, you know, one. God's not a God of halfway, Amen. Amen. So if I have two ears, that means I got to fully listen. I'm telling you, it says God opposes the proud. I, I pray and, and I just, I think truly, guys, that this COVID-19 thing and everything that happened, people were taking coverage in the wrong areas. They were taking cover in their homes, taking cover in their iPhones, probably weren't opening their Bible as much and trying to take a break, probably popping Coronas instead of rebuking the Corona and doing what they needed to do and taking cover under the anointing of God. I'm not here to... Uh, be a man of halfway or tell you the word halfway either. I'm telling you here today, God is truly, truly going to speak the truth to you guys. What we take cover under is truly important. I remember one time I had this broken umbrella in the rain. The thing flew away from me and I was like, there's no point for that. You buy those like cheap $2 ones from the store. And then I realized quality over quantity, right? Amen. That was the last sermon. I'm just kidding. 
cheesy joke. Amen, guys. So the first step of taking cover is getting low. We must be humble. But the number one thing that you're going to have to have is a teachable heart. When you come in here and you're ready to serve, and, and I, I just, and I encourage you guys so much, just listen to what these leaders have to tell you. They would never use you. They would never take advantage of you. For those who are online and you're taking cover right now in your house or you don't know where you're going to go, you haven't decided yet if you're going to be coming back to Rise Church after all this is over, I'm encouraging you, don't. Don't stop. Don't stop what God is doing. Uh, we, we've been sitting here taking cover for you guys, and we've been, we've been placing prayer over this place. We've been building the children's ministry. We've been getting the sanctuary ready. We've been preparing Bibles for those people. We've been preparing classes for you guys, and we've been taking cover in the Lord, seeking his anointing and his wisdom and asking him truly, God, when they come back, they're going to have a bigger covering than they've ever had in their lives, Lord. And it's not just because it's a building, but because we understood who we needed to take cover under I remember when I took cover in my car. I remember when I took cover in the streets and God ripped that addiction away from me. It's crazy. He said, uh, he said, what a man uncovers, God will cover. But what, what a man covers, God will uncover. What a man uncovers, God will cover. But what a man covers, God will uncover. I was undercover a lot in my life. I think I ran under the radar a long time with Jesus. <laughs> I heard about him during youth and young life and all these different events, and I did not want to just, uh, it's kind of like I give this example in the men's home all the time. I know that if I walk in my best friend's mom's house and she just got brand new carpet, right, I'm probably going to have to take what off? My shoes. Why? She just got brand new carpet, guys. There's no way I'm going to walk on my best friend's mom's carpet, right? We walk up to the front door, and the mom goes, hey, Jubal, how you doing? Um, can you please take off your shoes? I just got brand new carpet, you know? Please take off your shoes. And I go, yes, ma'am. She turns around, and, and what do we do still? Sometimes we just we walk all over our mom's carpet just like that. And I'm not here to disrespect anybody or do anything like that, but I feel like with this word of God and how God's trying to cover us, he's trying to give us a place to rest our feet. He's trying to give us a place and a refuge that we can go to to truly seek his word and understand where he is. He says, I got boots of peace for you. You don't even need to walk in the shoes that are branded anything. I got the boots of peace for you. So when you walk in my mother's house, just take your shoes off, walk on the carpet and have some respect for my word. Amen. Man, it's crazy. I could try to cover up everything that was in my life, but every time I truly got into prayer, it was about 30 days in the men's home. I was in front of a garage door in a three-bedroom house, and I got on my knees, and I uncovered everything about myself. I got a horrible letter in the mail, horrible, horrible letter in the mail about a friend who, who was passing away slowly, and, and I didn't know what I needed to do. And, and this, this young man in ministry told me, you need to tell God everything is what you need to do. I was like, everything? Man, <laughs> It's a lot. That's tough. I, 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 I kid you not, I was on my knees uh, at like the 30, 31 day mark in the men's home. And I even told God about the quarters I stole from my dad's United States map that he used to collect on the side. I was telling him about the pencils I stole, the shoes that I stole, the things that I did in my addiction, the cars, uh, the women, everything, everything. And it wasn't until I uncovered all that that the spirit of God truly covered me. And that's why he's saying what a man uncovers, God will cover, but what a man covers, God will uncover. He opposes the pride. And when we don't uncover these truths to God and we don't build a relationship with him, it's honestly a form of pride. Like, you're not, you're not probably good enough to deal with what I have to say, right? I'm not worthy enough, or probably you're not even strong enough to take care of what I have. Because every time we try to give a little bit of our heart to somebody in the past or just a little bit of something, they took it for granted. Or immediately it was just a triggered response that they had for us. They didn't even really listen. You know? God heard every single word, every single cry that I had in that room. He heard every little bit of it, but I had to be willing to uncover. And I'll be real with you. Just imagine right now for like 10 minutes, all the walls disappeared. Every, every wall in the entire world disappeared. Every building disappeared. Every trash can. No one could hide behind anything. Just imagine that for 10 minutes. You could see everything in the world going on, from the violence, the prostitution, molestation, people doing drugs in the back, the fathers beating their wives, the, the, the men and the women treating each other the way that they do, the kids cussing in the back, hiding, stealing, everything that's been going on in the world for 10 minutes, you got to see, and then imagine God's view on the world. That's just 10 minutes. Imagine a lifetime with us. 
Are you truly ready to uncover? I think a lot of us have been hiding under the radar for a long time, and I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ is going to seek you out, and he's about to change your life today. And if it's not today, I promise you it's going to be soon. You can't go under the radar with God. He sees all, and he wants you to be all that you can be everywhere that you are. Amen? Amen. So, man, I'm so excited. Can we give Jesus Christ just one more shout of praise in this place? Please. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, guys, if we're going to have to get low, this means before we're ever going to get where we need to be, we need to realize that we can't face what's ahead of us. Better yet, we can't face it alone. We must admit to ourselves that we need the help. Finding Christ, finding Christ is not just something you achieve, like a task or a goal, and then you mark it off the reminder list, and you're like, okay, cool, what's next? My car wash or something? That's something you daily do. You daily pick up your cross. If you have a daily reminder and it's set Monday through Sunday, go ahead and put it as get humble, get on my knees, pray to God, and give him your life daily or it's not going to work. That's not a, man, it's crazy. Love and forgiveness, um, it's not an occasional act. It's a consistent attitude. A spirit of excellence is not just an occasional act. It's a consistent attitude. Martin Luther King said it best when he said that. The one man who probably was protesting and having peace in the right way, amen, still gunned down for the things he said. It's crazy ready to uncover the truth in the right way, and he still got took out. So imagine what's going to happen if you're truly ready to uncover. It means you're a threat now. The enemy don't want me to get along with you. The devil don't want me to find out who you are, what your favorite color is, when your birthday is. He don't want me to let you, trust me, he does not want the leadership in here to find out what you're struggling with. Because if Mikey, Pastor Ray, Eddie Pugh, one of these leaders, or CJ find out what you're struggling with, it's over for the devil in Jesus' mighty name. Someone's getting saved. Somebody's going to get saved, I promise. You come to rise, you catch a healing. Amen? We don't catch feelings at rise, we catch a healing. Amen? Tell the devil, bring his steel toes. Amen. All right, guys, I want to talk to y'all about, uh, next I want to talk to y'all about Exodus 33. I'm still talking about, I didn't even know it was going to take this long. I thought I was going to be talking about this for five minutes. This is crazy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, We're going to be going to Exodus 33, guys. Um, Exodus 33. What's cool about taking cover is that you also got to understand it it, it is prayer. But more than anything, prayers that intercede for other people are even more powerful because then it's not just about you. Amen. All of us can rub God like he's a genie lamp and try to ask for things. Habakkuk 2.2, you know, it talks about goals. It talks about if you truly put it on your heart, it won't delay for God will make it happen. But how many things have to be about us? What I, heard, what I learned in the Bible is that those who refresh, others get refreshed. So we need to start interceding for other people in the church rather than ourselves and watch the blessing come back. My prayer is like boomerangs. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, the word of the Lord reads. Hey, by the way, I'm sorry for this projector. Mikey went so hard in the, uh, the drum cage this morning. It kind of got shifted a little bit. Amen. I'm just kidding. Don't expose leadership. Amen. Yeah, you got to have fun at church. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. So look, it says it was Moses's practice to take the tent of meeting and set it up some distance from the camp. And I'm going to explain this after. So just don't think this is a random spot in the Bible that we're in. It's Exodus 33. It's beautiful. It says it was Moses's practice to take the to take the tent of meeting and set it up some distance from the camp. Everyone who wanted to make a request to the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent of meeting, all the people would get up and stand in the entrances of their own tents. They would all watch Moses until he disappeared inside. As he went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and hover at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. When the people saw the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they would stand and they would bow down in front of their own tents. Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses. Man, this is crazy. This is awesome. Remember, guys, everything in the Bible is truth. (laughs) Amen? Everything you read, you have to believe. You have to believe that right now what I'm reading, this really happened. When the flood, the Noah, the boat, fire from, fire from heaven, all that happened, you have to go in your mind. Like right now, if you even want that faith of a mustard seed, like Jesus, what you're telling me right now, this is the truth. I'm reading it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm reading the truth because I got lied to my whole life. I don't even know what the truth was. So thank you for Exodus 33 right here. It says, inside the tent of the meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. 
Afterward, Moses would return to the camp, but the young man who assists at him, young man, Joshua, son of Nun, not like of nothing, of a nun, you know, he would remain behind in the tent of the meeting. Sounds like an armor bearer. Amen. Where my armor bearer's at? Amen. Amen. Don't give away your location. If you want to experience the glory of God, then let yourself be what? Be covered. Everyone say fully covered. I'm fully covered, not by the sin, not by the hate, not by the shame, not by the doubt, not by your past, none of that. So right here we understand Moses is in a tent, right? This is, so let me give you a little behind story. Moses at this point, it's been like three months uh, since, the, since the Red Sea has been split. All these people are going along, right? And God calls Moses back and he says, I want you to come to Mount Sinai, bring everybody with you. They get to the mountain, they go up to the mountain and God himself pretty much appears on the mountain. Lightning's crashing, the sound of uh, trumpets are going, thunder, everything's going on. The people are honestly getting scared and Moses is like, well, this is God. I mean, I saw him in a burning bush. So I'm not really, I'm not really, you know, messed up on the fact that he would come down on a mountain. He was a burning bush. If God can use a donkey in a burning bush, he can probably step down from a mountain. Amen. Amen. That donkey story is something later. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the donkey later. Amen. So God is on this mountain. He's talking to these people and the people are in fear. They don't even know. They can't even. They're trembling at the fear of the Lord. They're like, Moses, dude, bro, you go up there and you talk to him. It kind of sounds like when you're in trouble with your little sister or something. You're like, you go tell dad. I ain't going to tell dad. I ain't do nothing. I ain't saying nothing. Plead the fifth. I ain't scrubbing the wall with no toothbrush. You go tell Mikey. Amen. <laughs> They're sitting over there fearing the Lord going, because when, when you're truly in the presence of God and you truly finally see him for the first time, who's the first person you're looking at? You're looking at that leader in the room. And you can tell when a leader is in the room. He's super quiet. He's observing everything. He's always taking care of the people. And you always know who a leader is in the room because they're always asking him questions. There's all, there, when, when stuff panics, when everything's hitting the fan, when you don't know what to do inside of the room, you're looking around like, what, what's good? him, right, or her? And that's the person you ask the questions to. Moses was that guy at the time. And praise God, Moses got to be available in this moment. He goes up to Mount Sinai, and what he does is that he pitches a tent. He pitches a tent up there, and he would go and he would talk to God, and, and God's getting him prepared to consecrate these people, uh, to purify them, to cleanse them, to get them ready to do what they needed to do because he was about to let them know, you're about to be my people. You're about to be my sons and my daughters. And I want to make sure that you don't just hear the contract. <laughs> you don't just see the contract and you sign it, that I'm actually going to tell you these commandments first so you can know what you're signing, right? Right? Thank God we have a God who's understanding that we need reassurance sometimes, right? Thank you, Jesus. So what he would do was Moses went up to the mountain. Well, he was in the, he was in the, the tent for 40 days and 40 nights, kind of like Jesus was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And what I've learned with the whole 40 days, 40 nights thing sometimes is that I feel like when people come into church, me, myself included, I promise you, because I serve so much in the media booth, sometimes I want to get a word in, but I say, thank you, Jesus, that I'm serving. What I do is it's kind of like a campfire. It's kind of like I'm a log. We're all logs coming in here, right? All of us want to get on fire from God, but we wear the same fit. We, we don't get spiritually fit like we're supposed to be. We don't fully clothe ourselves in that humility. So when we come inside, we're like a drenched log. With the wrong fuel, you'll never get caught on fire for God. You'll waste the fuel for another person. Sometimes it's the driest seasons, like in the desert, and Moses in the tent. Man, dry log will spark up real quick, amen? Sometimes I thank God for those dry seasons. I thank God for the, for the 40 days, the 40 nights in the deserts. I thank God when I couldn't provide my own insurance bill or my own car bill or even my own clothes or anything that was going on. Because it was in the dry season that God got to ignite me on fire. And I truly got to spread that. Jesus is fire, by the way. Jesus is fire. It's not like any regular fire. It doesn't go out in one spot. It's contagious. It spreads. And the only thing to kill a fire, what, what is the only thing you can put a fire out with? Those big forest fires, what do they do? They ignite another fire on the other end, don't they? I'm hitting you from both sides, devil. I'm going to get you right in the middle too. You ain't going to hang around. You can't get me on either side. I'm closing you in with both fire. Man, thank you, Jesus. 40 days and 40 nights he was in this tent, guys, and it's so crazy. The people started freaking out. You told Moses to go up to the mountain. It's been 40 days and 40 nights. You're wondering about how long your leader's been gone, and now you're like, well, where is he? What is he doing? I mean, he's definitely not training or talking to God or something that's, like, you know, super important for us or anything like that. I mean, he, God was on a mountain, so 
you know, given Moses is probably like 80 years old and this is Mount Sinai. It's called Mount Sinai. I don't, I don't hear like valley. I could barely climb steps. And my trainer, lately, my trainer is not leg day, it's leg week. You know what I mean? I'm over here, this old man Moses was going up a mountain, dude. That's crazy. He walked up, and you're worried about when he's coming back. Man, man, catch a healing. For real. Don't worry about how long your leader's been gone. Don't worry about how long it's going to be until church comes back with all this COVID-19 or when your Starbucks coffee is going to be handed the correct. Don't worry about when your laptop, your internet service, or everything's going to be working correctly. Don't be worried about if we're going to have a million people in here or 200 people. We're still going to preach, guys, like there's one soul that's ready to be saved, and that's all that matters. <laughs> if Pastor Ray wants to take 40 days off, Amen. Go up to Mount Sinai, chill, relax, get your little, the umbrella, get a Topo Chico. He, man, he, he goes, Pastor Ray, man, let's give a round of applause for Pastor Ray real quick. You know what's crazy is that we'll take cover, ready for our leader to go handle business, but our leader is going to take cover right now, so we never have to handle business again. Right? I would rather go get a training so I could figure something out so I never have to do it again rather than just keep reoccurring the same cycle, the same cycle. It's like those who want to take, you know, like don't worry about your business here if it's going to work out or not. Go get some training. Go get your time in. Go get somebody that can help you humble yourself, get low, and just listen to what they have to say. I went to church and youth and young life for so long. This dude was playing guitar. He was jacked. He was talking about God and anointing and stuff. I'm just like, man, like what's going on? This is crazy but I wasn't listening. I was like, when is this over? And all these people are down below in the mountain and they're like, when is this gonna be over? When is our leader gonna come back? And what happens is, is that Aaron, he kind of makes an excuse and he goes and he makes this golden calf and everything like that, just so these people have something to worship because what's, they just want something to worship. They want something to call upon. So they get this big golden calf, they're dancing around it, acting kind of like fools, worshiping an idol God. I mean, how do you see God on a mountain and then you make a golden calf? You know what I mean? Like, it, that's crazy. They're idolizing a golden calf, just like we idolize our jewelry, our cars, that website that you've been looking at. Man, been condoning at work with the people that you shouldn't be condoning at because you've been walking this out with God for so long. So that's the cool part about taking cover. Taking cover, it's not just a remote location that you always have to go to the top of the mountain. What happened was is that Moses interceded for 40 days, and when he came back down, you realize that his tent was actually mobile. He took his tent with them everywhere he went. Everyone say mobile. I don't want you to have a remote location where God, where you always got to run to the same place, like run to your car, run to that random closet. But if you do, that's awesome. But I'm telling you, you need to take your tent with you everywhere you go. Moses interceded. He came back to the bottom of the mountain and they would see God's presence inside of this tent. They would start worshiping it instead of worshiping because God wanted to be like, God wanted to completely wipe these people out. I mean, like, this is after everything that happened, Exodus, the Red God just split the Red Sea for these people, and then all of a sudden they're worshiping the wrong God. He's like, I'm going to take all these people out. Like, I just used a huge sheet to take out the enemy, and now they're idolizing a golden calf. Sometimes it's not a faith problem, it's a memory problem with us. It's like we forget what God's done. Let me get to that later. That's a look at my notes real quick. What's cool, um, what's cool, real quick, before I switch points, because I don't want to take too much time up. I didn't realize how much you could preach on that. It was pretty cool. We got time? We got time today? Okay, cool. Hey, I just want to talk Jesus and have fun with my family today, man. Amen. So uh, what happened was after this, what happened was Moses, right? Moses was talking to God. He's like, hey, I'm not going to go back out of this tent next time because all these people are tripping. I'm not going to go talk to them until your presence goes before me. And I'm not ready to leave my prayer room, and I'm not ready to leave the men's home, because there's probably some husband. Raise your hand if you're a husband in the men's home. I promise you right now, your six-month tent meeting that you're going to be having with God, you're not going to want to run home until his presence is truly with you. If that means six months ain't a long time, and you got to go a year in the program, if one year at Rise ain't long enough, and you got to go to two years, if just being a greeter isn't long enough, and you got to become a server at Life Groups too, it doesn't matter. You don't stop until his anointing and his presence is truly with you. Why would you walk out? the same person 
Why would you come to church? Why would you go into the tent and walk out the same person? When I go to a car wash, my car better be coming out spiffy clean. And fix the tire because the Mr. Wash always rubs the tire. Just kidding, God. Be humble. I'm not ready to keep walking in here and walk out the same person. I'm tired of it. God, I'm taking my tent with me today. I'm not going to go out and talk to your people until your presence goes with me. I took cover for 40 days and 40 nights, God. Some of us, a long time, amen, ready to see your families. You're ready to take a covering for them. You're ready to take a whipping, a lashing, a beating. You're ready to take a hit for them finally. You're ready to go out there and be the man of God that you need to be for your family. You don't leave that tent at the home with you. You take that tent with you, and you show all those people. There's a reason why that tent wasn't in the camp. That's where all the compromise and sin was. That's where all the division was. I'll tell you right now, God, <laughs> light and darkness, they cannot share the same spot. And praise Jesus. God is saying, you can't rest in that area. You weren't made for that. You can't even share the same. It can't even share the same space with you. It's not good enough. You're worthy. You're way more special than that. No wonder he keeps removing us out of situations and humbling us. You're worth more than that. Sometimes we get low in the wrong areas. All my friends in low places. I'm not trying out for the worship team. I was joking with Sam one time. I was like, do people just randomly start singing around you? Like they're like auditioning. I'm not going to go on a rabbit trail. <coughs> Amen. So guys, we have to truly understand. I want everybody to say taking cover. Is everyone kind of clear on why we need to take cover, why it's important? We truly need to go and take cover, but don't come out of that covering, guys, until you have that spirit of God, which if that means you got to go intercede for a long time, pray for your people, you're going to have to do it. But don't come out of that place until you're truly ready, because God is not a God of halfway. And when I come out, I don't want half product. I don't want to be 50 percent of Jubal. I want to be 100 percent Jubal. God, God's not even going to be 100 because when his anointing is upon you and you walk into the room, God said, uh, Moses talked to God and he said, God, I want to see your glory. One, one more thing. God said, I want to see your glory. He had to cover Moses when he showed him his glory, when he put him in the cleft of a rock, because his glory, his anointing was too great for a man to handle. He said, you won't live and see my face. No man will. No man will. The only thing you're going to see is I'm going to cover you with my hand. I'm still going to cover you in the rock between a rock and a hard place. I'm still going to cover you in your sin. Watch this. The only thing you're going to see is my back and the trail, the example that I'm leaving for you. This anointing I'm dropping, that's for you. If God never would have covered him with his hand, God, please have your hand over this congregation. We couldn't even handle everything God has for us. I can barely handle taking the trash out sometimes. <laughs> taking cover under my, my pillow and my... Nah. All right, guys. Um, I hear this thing all the time. It's crazy. Like, if you're scared, go to church. I go to rise because I'm ready for breakthroughs. I go to rise because I'm ready to praise and worship and give God every single thing that I have. I'm not saying if you're scared, go to church. The devil should be scared that we're going to church. We should be like, thank you, Jesus, I get a place to go worship to. And I don't know if you've ever heard this before when it comes to taking cover, because some of you are like, I'm not ready to take a tent. The tent wasn't just a small thing. It was pretty big. Um, it was a big tent. He would set it up. It would, it would, it would take a while. I think it turned into a, um, a tabernacle um, that would they actually used. It became like the actual place for them. Um, but what's crazy, have you ever heard this before? Because I'm, I'm telling you all to listen to leadership. I'm telling you to humble yourself, serve, scrub a toilet. I'm telling you to do all of that. I'm telling you to vacuum. I'm telling you to come to church and dress nice, be respectful, and do all this stuff, right? Like, who's this guy? <laughs> you know? I'm telling you to do all these things. I'm asking you to. And that's what Jesus does. He gives us a choice. But I hear this thing all the time from people. Have you ever heard this before? Well, that's between me and God. Well, that's between me and God. Well, bro, I mean, you're just trying to minister to your family members. And they're like, well, that's between me and who? That's between me and God. 
I'm here to tell you today that there's going to be a lot of problems, a lot of situations, a lot of decisions that you're going to make between you and God. And if you don't put leadership, serving, humbleness, humility right in between that, you're never going to be successful. It's going to be a battle that's never in between you and God. It's going to be between you and you. I got tired of looking in the mirror and talking down to myself that I started getting on my knees and looking up to God and talking to him. I said, God, I don't need to see my reflection. I'm trying to reflect you. Y'all ready to reflect Jesus today? Amen. Let's go, guys. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, the next part is that what leaders do, a lot of good leaders, great leaders, right? Good is the, uh, the enemy of great. So for a great leader, what we need to do, guys, is that we're going to have to understand what cover fire is. And for you to be a great leader, you're going to have to be a great follower. Amen. That means we're going to have to get underneath this leadership and we're going to have to do what we have to do. We're going to have to listen. We're going to have to take instruction. And I'm kind of here to be your trainer, your tour guide today. So when you come back and everybody that's watching online, when you come back from Rice Church, that you're ready to serve, sign up, get connected and truly do this thing with God, not just go halfway or half step uh, like they did with the Holy of Holies and Joshua, but that you're going to walk fully into your anointing, fully into your calling. And we're going to help you along the way. You're not going to have to do this by yourself. So that means that we're going to take the fire for you. We're going to cover you. We got you. Don't worry. We got everything set up. The children ministry is ready. We got chairs. We got programs. We got all the teachings that we need to do. The teachers are super excited. They can't wait to teach all the life change. We got the men's home cleaning, serving, doing what we need to do. The sanctuary is taken care of. Everything's working. Everything's covered. We got your back. Just stay low. Just stay low. Everything's already taken care of. Kind of like Todd said, now that you know the truth, what? You're accountable to it. Everything and every resource is here for you to take of God. His hands upon you, you are covered. He's got you. Believe it. Amen? Amen. Leaders go first. And leaders, they see everything that we can't. So we're going to have to remove our vision. Sometimes you're going to have to have that blind faith. You're going to have to realize that it's not meant for you to see because when you're low and your back's up against that rock and your leader's above, do, 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 do. just like in war, we're going to have to understand whose sight do you have to believe. He's telling you, he's telling you while the war is going on, your bills and everything are going on, your girlfriend's trying to leave you, everything's happening inside of life, your best friend just died back home, your dad's struggling with cancer inside of the hospital, and God's over here telling you with his word, do, 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 I got you, don't worry, I've already covered it, I've already split the Red Sea, do, 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 don't worry about it, I built a boat, we stopped the flood, it already happened, do, 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 don't worry, Jonah, we're going to get you off the boat, you're going to get the shore to safety, Amen. Don't worry. Do, 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 do. I got you. Reload. Click. You hear it. We hear chaos. We hear fear. I hear that magazine loaded. I hear another hit from God coming today. I hear another promise. Man, Jesus is good. Hey, you know what's good with that cover fire, too? Every time a soul is saved, I hear that cover coming from heaven. They celebrate like no one else, man. Saying, God, hey, that's another one covered in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You, know what, you know what I like about Rise? That our miracles aren't in big fancy shows or circus olays or anything like that or anything that's crazy. We're not doing anything wrong. The true miracle at Rise is seeing people come to the altar, getting on their knees and giving their life to Jesus Christ and going, I'm saved. As if that's not good enough, right? Man, that's everything. That's the mission. What's the first part of our mission here at Rise? Reach the lost. I'm saved. I'm good. Minister to me every now and then, but get out there. Go in the streets. Find somebody. Pray for a homeless guy. Talk to them. Get their back. They need cover fire. They ran out of ammunition. They ain't got nothing left. We got to be there for them. They don't know how to fend. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what I had to do in my life. Man, I was sorry. I sucked as a leader. I was willing to admit it. I need to be teachable. Direct me, God, Pastor, Mikey, tell me something, bro. I don't even know how to drive down the street without crashing. Keep fundraising, Jubal. You got two hours left. Yes, sir. Amen. Under authority, man. You'll never become a great leader until you become a great follower. So remember, you have to trust your leader's vision before your own. With the story we got with this cover fire, it's going to be in Joshua and uh, it's in Joshua 10. It's pretty cool. There was these, uh, these Amorites and all these kings got together and they wanted to go. I think it was uh, Gilga. Gilga. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. But it was the word of the Lord reads. 
The five kings of the Amorites gathered against Gibeon to go against Joshua and his people. So Joshua and his entire army, including his best warriors, left Gilgal and set out for Gibeon. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord said to Joshua, for I've given you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua traveled all night from Gilgal and took the Amorite armies by surprise. The Lord threw them into a what? He said he threw them into a panic and the Israelites slaughtered great numbers of them at Gibeon. You talk about cover fire. God just gave them right into your hand. That's like giving you the cheat codes to your favorite video game. You know, like those people who go fishing and they use those radars. It's like, doop, doop, doop. There's like 50 fish underneath you. You're cheating. It's not fair. <laughs> Giving it to you, man. Giving it to you. Saying, it, they're in your hand. Go for it. Attack them now. I got you covered. I got your back. Sign up to serve. It's already there. I covered you. I made his calling powerful three years ago. He already did what he was supposed to do. Now it's your turn to fulfill that calling. He served. He did it. He set a path. Walk in it. On the day, man, this is crazy. As the Amorite, wait, where am I at? It said, not a single will stand up to you. It says, the Lord threw them into a panic. The Israelites chased the enemy along the road to Beth Horon, killing them all along the way to Ezekiah and Mechida. And that's pretty bad. I mean, all these people are dying. He's slaying them. He's slaughtering them. He's giving them into the hand of these people. So understand that God is going to fight the good fight. Amen. And God is going to help out the righteous people who are fighting for a good cause. So he's going to cover you guys. You just got to make sure you're fighting for the right things. As the uh, Amorites are treated down, it said, the brethren, the Lord destroyed them with a terrible hailstorm from heaven. They continued. Man, that's crazy. Did y'all, I don't know if y'all can see that. Mikey messed that projector up. It says, as the Amorites retreated down the road from Bethron, the Lord destroyed them with a terrible hailstorm. He literally casted hell from heaven on these people. Sounds like Jesus, it sounds like God was like the first Air Force strike was all the way in Joshua 10. The enemy won't even see what God's going to do. Man, it's crazy. He rained a hailstorm for him. This next part's even crazy. Because I want you to imagine every excuse that you have in your mind about, well, I'm not covered. You know, they're going to shut down the house and lights are going to go off. My bills aren't going to get paid. All this crap. I'm not even going to have gas to get here. I can't even find a job. And every job. I want you to eliminate every excuse right now because leaders don't make excuses. Leaders, they make it happen. Amen. So check this out. (laughs) This is so crazy. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. This is verse 12. He said, God, he was praying to him. He he talking to him in front of all. He talked in front of everybody. He didn't do it in private or anything like that. He was speaking in front of everybody saying, I know who my God is. I'll speak out in public about my Jesus. I'm evangelizing right now. I don't need to hold anything back. He said, God, let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Halon. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. God said, give you the light. I'm going to make the light stand still so you're covered all day. He stopped the sun in place. He said, you don't have light. You don't have enough light to kill your enemies. I'm going to give you all the light you need, baby boy. I got you. I got your back. You're protected. Moon, sun, stay in place. The God that we don't think will move in our finances or the God that we don't think will move in our hearts so we can truly change. My God is the God who stops literally the sun in place. It's powerful, man. Powerful. You know why, though? God saw something that they didn't see, and we need to trust in our leader's vision before we ever trust in ours. It's kind of like a press box in football, really. The guys are on the plays. They got those helmets on. They're all tunnel vision, had their heads cracked, and, you know, from all the the drugs and everything that they've been on and all the crazy stuff that they've been doing and all the, the concussions and everything like that, we're tunnel vision, and we're going against the enemy, and we forget what's going on on the sides, right? We hear all the crowd, everybody cheering. We're thinking we're doing the right thing in life, and then the guy up in the press box is like, man, he's doing it all wrong. Look at that dude. Who does the play go through? The play goes to the coach. The coach gets the information from where? Up top. The guy up top, he looks, he scopes it out. He goes, this is what the enemy's doing to him. This is the defense. This is how he's going up against you. This is what you need to do to stop it. All his information's from the top. He sits there ready to cover him, man. 
Sometimes we don't want to listen uh, uh, to the press box. We don't want to listen to God up there. And I know what I see. I see the demons. I'm going to go ahead and go do this. I'm going to go ahead and leave the home three months early. I know what's going on. I'm not going to get high. I'm not going to relapse. Honey, I'm going to go ahead and go with this decision. Don't worry. It's going to work out. It's like you don't see what I see. You're blind. You're tunnel vision. If you narrowed your focus on Jesus, you'd be on the narrow road. God put the enemy in a panic for him. Instead of us panicking and being ones in the room, I told these guys, when you walk up to the field and you walk up to the line of scrimmage, you need to know the play. You need to know the play. Don't, you, we do not need to be the Christians that when Jesus comes back, we're like, what's the play? What's going on? Hey, do you know uh, what kind of defense that is? Bro, that's Jesus, man. He's coming here to save your life, bro. Like, do you not see what's going on? Because we were so blind to what was truly going on. If we would just listen to the vision of Pastor Ray and who God's put in front of us, man. And we would truly just reach the lost because that's the first step. And if you lost yourself, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is your savior. He loves you and he's ready to cover you in every battle, every fight that you ever have. God's strength and covering, it allows us rest, not resistance. They didn't even have to lift up their swords as much. The hailstones and everything covered the fire for them. So allowing our leaders to take the shots, even if they're wrong in situations, is going to be vital for us. It's going to be super vital for us. One of the greatest things about armor bearing, serving your leader and understanding who they are, is that Pastor Ray in this church and all of us were human too. We have a human side as well. We're not perfect. I promise you we're not perfect. (laughs) You should hear some of our staff meetings. They're awesome. We are not perfect by any means. But I'll tell you this, we serve a God who is, and he's willing to move through us and serve us because we're crazy enough to go, God, I'm available today. Just use me. I ain't got nothing better to do. Let me be humble today, God. Just use me. If it's scrubbing dishes, if it's picking up uh, crazy rocks in the parking lot, if it's sweeping, if it's scrubbing a toilet, if it's moving a mop, if it's signing up and serving and giving out cupcakes to a kid who's going to hear about Jesus for 10 minutes at an event, God, just use me today. Please, I'm begging you. If he can stop the sun, man, I wish he'd stop the sun right now. Like, stop it from happening, like what it's doing. It's super hot everywhere. I think he's killing COVID or something. He's wiping the, he's wiping the rest of it out. And you're going to get tan at the same time. I'm a God of overflow. COVID will not just be dispersed, but you'll also catch a tan. I got this story, guys, um, about leaders seeing things um, that we can't sometimes. Um, Pastor Ray, he's such an awesome guy. Um, he mentored me um, all the way from my addiction coming into the home. Um, and, uh, man, this dude's awesome. He, uh, he picked me up, and he would take me out to lunch sometimes, and he'd just talk to me, you know, and he'd just be like, hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? How's your family? Uh, where are you at in leadership? Where are you at in the home? How's everything going? What do you hate? What do you need? How's the program going? And I remember he took me to Subway one day. And this, uh, this day changed my life forever because the day before, I was thinking about leaving Rise and I was thinking about leaving the church and everything behind. It was after my first six months. I was truly hurt by what I thought that, that I was owed, like I was entitled to something. <laughs> like I came to the program to get help and get sober and find Jesus, not to, not to get paid and run the program and try to be the ultimate leader for the, for the ministry. You know what I mean? Like, be humbled, you will just be quiet. And I, he would take me out, he was talking to me, and I'm like, you know, Pastor, I just think maybe, like, I need to get a job here, man. Like, you know, like, like maybe I need to get a job somewhere and just build my credit now that I'm done and I'm, I'm sober and everything. Like, and he's just like, man, did this dude just not catch anything from the last six months? Like, did he not catch anything? And I'm sitting here, like, talking to him about all these things. Like, I just feel like I need to go home and, you know, go minister to my family and go be a superhero now that i found God a little bit. And, and we're in Subway. And he's just like, oh, okay, Jubal, sounds good. Um, hey, ma'am, um, uh, can you grab me an application real quick um, for Subway? And I'm like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, you know? And what I was kind of doing is I was venting to him, but I was kind of bluffing in the wrong way. And he was telling me, he's like, Jubal, you're called to ministry, man. You're called to, to help, the, uh, help the sick, reach the lost, truly get them off the streets. And not that Subway's bad or anything. Like, I got the Golden Corral girls go hard in this Rise Church. And they use these places as stepping stones to get them to where they need to be. But Pastor knew that Subway and where I was at, it was not part of my walk. I was not supposed to go to Subway. Praise God. <laughs> I worked at Subway for three years in high school, and I thought that, man, I'm going to return why would you go inside a church and not come out a different person? I'm trying to come out of the program and go right back to my vomit in return. Like, bro, I'd rather get wealth in the kingdom and get spiritually fed and have my riches up in heaven 
that have it on earth. Man, pastor was telling me, he's like, Jubal, you don't see who you're supposed to be. It's kind of like we have those girls in our life. They're like, honey, but you don't see who you are. And I don't care that you trip out or you do this. You act like that every night. Like, I love you. And you're so amazing. And you're sitting there like, what is wrong with her? She's crazy. Like, I'm not like that at all. And they see all these things in you, but you don't see them because you look at yourself like dirt. And you realize, like, man, my word, I didn't even feel worthy enough to ever grab them. Like, I didn't feel worthy enough to do a tithe and offering one time. And pastor's like, hey, I want you to get up there and do tithe and offering. I was like, bro, I used to steal money from Christians, and now God's asking me to ask for his money back? Yeah, hey, God's going to get his glory, amen? Amen. So pastor, he talked me out of uh, getting that Subway application that day. And uh, a year and a half later, I was able to dedicate two years of my life to volunteer, making no money, serving, giving everything I had to God, staying up with heroin addicts coming down, giving them water, making them food, dudes screaming in the middle of the night, uh, giving them blankets, giving them a place to stay, ministering to them. When I was dead tired, 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, cooking banana bread, but I knew that banana bread was going to feed a homeless man two days later in Odessa. I'm telling you, you might see yourself in Subway making uh, Italian herbs and cheese bread, Jubal, but I'm, I'm about to get you out there and you're about to give them the bread of life. Amen? Amen. It's crazy, man. Pastor's like, man, you're trying to. God said you're called for greater things and we'll settle for less. Don't settle for less, man. God, God is limitless. God is limitless. He can do anything for you. He's not, he's not just here to, to, cover, uh, to cover you for a little bit, man. He's here to cover you for the rest of your life. So uh, I just pray that over you. If you don't see yourself serving or you don't see yourself in this church or doing something important or valuable, I'm pretty sure you're going to be better than me at it. Just step up to the plate. We're here to guide you, give you all the resources that you need. You can get connected to Right Now Media, to the prayer team, to somebody and serve somewhere. We'll create you a new position. It'll be called your name or something, and you can just serve there. It doesn't matter. There's a place for you, you know? For real. If it's handing out flyers, selling T-shirts... When you go up and you see Jesus in heaven, he's be like, oh, you, yeah, in the back. No, not, no, not them. No, you get over here. No, yeah, that person here. Come here. Yeah, you served like your entire life. Come on, my loyal and faithful servant. Your loyal and faithful what? Servant. If Jesus can wash the feet of Judas and feed the very man that was going to turn him in and dine with him at the same table, I think we can get past if Betty, who we don't like across the corner, is coming into the church, and we can go and shake our hand and say, Jesus Christ loves you. If God can do that for Judas, man, that, oh, man, you talk about spiritual courage, man. That's crazy. But forgiveness is not an occasional act. It's a consistent attitude. Amen. Guys, uh, if I can, uh, if I can have uh, the pads come on, um, the band, y'all, you guys can come up if y'all want to for this last part. Um, we talked about taking cover. We talked about cover fire, God literally casting hailstones, everything down. We talked about taking cover, having our tent mobile with us, having those prayers, interceding for others. We talked about truly giving it to God, God not being a God of halfway, but understanding that he's got a full mag ready to take. When all those shots are firing down rage, we can't see anything that's going on. He sees above us. He sees it while we're tunnel vision and we don't see that there's any way out or there's anything that can happen. We see that God's been seeing the bigger picture the entire time. We're saying, God, I'm ready to take cover. I'm ready to get under this leadership. I'm ready to take cover underneath this church. Rise will be my place for worship. For all those, again, online, if, if you don't feel like you want to come back to church or there's something that you're struggling with, man, I pray for you right now. I encourage you. Make sure that you get connected. God wants us to mingle, build fellowship, have relationship, be connected. We thrive off connection. If you haven't realized that, we need acceptance in our life. I'm here to reassure you, if you come every Sunday, I will reassure you that you are the righteousness of Christ, that you do matter. So there's this, uh, there's this awesome story, guys. Awesome story, and I've given you one about Moses, one about Joshua. Moses, he led followers. I want to be a Joshua, a young leader, because Joshua, he led leaders. And that's who I see Pastor Ray as. I see a man who leads leaders. He does, he's not here to, like, control you or force you to open up your Bible and demand that you do any of these things. He's leading you to open up your Bible so that you can seek it for yourself. It's powerful. Amen. Um. Jesus, uh, there was a storm going on and uh, all the disciples um, were down below. And I want you to understand why you're gonna be fully covered today, okay? If uh, you can put that, that slide up. My, my, my last point is uh, 
the title because I want you to understand that you're fully covered. Amen. One more time, guys. Say fully covered. Speak it over yourself. And, and Jesus, oh man, just cover them right now with your love. I don't, I don't have the scriptures up here right now for this story because I know a lot of y'all guys have heard it, but I don't want you to read it. I just want you to listen, okay? Can y'all do me a favor? Can you please listen? In Luke 14, he talks about becoming a disciple and he talks about the cost and he talks about us being the salt of the earth and us, if we lose our flavor, what good are we? We are but useless salt. And if you're called to be the salt of the earth, that means in this season, if you don't feel like your flavor is good enough or you're not worth it or you're not here to spice things up, I'm here to tell you in this season that God is ready to make you taste better, have a flavor, have a have highly uh, favor and an anointing like never other guys. He's ready to tell you that everywhere you go, you're going to spice up the situation. You're going to fully cover any situation and you're going to bring life to it. The cool thing about salt too, me and my brother Jordan, we were talking about salt preserves things. If we're meant to be the salt of the earth, what are we meant to preserve? the earth and the souls inside of it. This storm was going on with Jesus and as the evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although the other boats followed, but soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and he began to fill it with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat underneath. He went undercover. The disciples woke him up or Jesus was sleeping underneath the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, saying, teacher, do you not care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Why do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other, even the wind and the waves obey him. He said, I make, I make my people tremble. I make the darkness tremble that's inside of them. He doesn't make you tremble. He makes the darkness inside of you tremble. And that's why we fear him because there's still more for you to let go of. Understand what he's saying. When he's on top of the mountain speaking, he's saying, I've already overcame the mountain that's in your life. That's why I'm talking above it and not below it in the valley. He's already overcame the situation. And now we're standing on a boat and I, I want you to understand this because it's so important. We talked about this story before and, I, and I've heard pastor talk about it, but I, I, I've heard some people, they, I feel like they forget this part. It wasn't the waves, it wasn't the wind, it wasn't the thunder, it wasn't the lightning, it wasn't any of that that woke them up. None of that woke up Jesus. The only thing that woke up Jesus was the sound of his child. That was it. It's not the storm or the chaos or the fear, anything you're going through that's gonna wake them up. Most of us have haters that are sleeping on us right now that we're trying to wake up so we can get something from them or get an edge on them. Jesus says, I sleep on my haters. I don't have time for that. If the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy, if he can't kill you or destroy you, and I know we've been through a lot, amen, he's going to try to steal your peace from you. And I rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. He can't steal your peace. He won't steal your peace. He won't have it. We started to get to the point that you're like the boat now. The waves, life, everything rocking you back and forth, not knowing what decision you're going to make or where you're going to go if you're going to make it to the other side. Man, crazy. Kind of like GPS, right? You type in six hours, four hours to get to Lubbock, but instead of wanting to get there in four hours, you decide to take a couple detours and make the trip like 12. Crazy. You want to take all these stops and all these detours and all these breaks. Jesus Christ trying to get you there in six months. Jesus Christ trying to get you there June 14th when you're able to sign up and serve and be able to do something great for your life. There shouldn't even be a date on serving. It shouldn't even be a, a question. It shouldn't be like, when can I say? It's like, I'm serving now. What's going on? How can I clean up? Are y'all are staying after service to vacuum or something? What's up? Because when those kids come in here and they start worshiping Jesus, this boat will not rock. There will be peace inside of this house. When you come in, the enemy will not share the same space. Refuse to. I refuse. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Jesus made the weapon that you're tripping about. He made those weapons. He manufactured all of them. Remember, guys, that... Uh, Man, this is crazy. 
guys, it's so crazy. I used to do this as a kid. Okay, check this out. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't forget this. Have you ever been in a situation where it's raining outside and it's hailing, it's going crazy, and like you're like, man, I'm gonna get it. You're like in your car and you're like, okay, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna open up the car. I'm gonna like throw on my hoodie or like halfway do my shirt over my head, you know, and then I'm just gonna run inside. Have any of you ever, got, have any of you ever done that? I have. I've like done like a two minute plan and everything like that. Took my last swig of Dr. Pepper like it was gonna be my last. I'm in the car and I open up the car door and you hear what immediately start falling. Then it gets real intense, right? You open up the car door and you just boom, you just book it inside and you start running. I got a question for you. Mythbusters answered it like back in 2009. Do you think that you'll get more wet if you walk in the rain or if you run in the rain? A lot of us will try to run with God. A lot of us will try to run from our problems and run from everything that we've been doing. And what happens is we get caught up in leadership or entitlement, or we're not ready to still stay low and go underneath our, our leadership. What happens is we start to come up with these little two minute plans in the car, right? Like, man, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna just do it this way and go out there. And we start to run and get ahead of ourselves. Well, Mythbusters proved it. When you actually run in the rain, you're actually running into more rain. You actually get more wet by running in it than walking in it. When you walk this thing out with God, the things that you were supposed to go through and you were meant to go through are gonna happen. I'm meant to be right here, right now in this storm. I'm meant to be going through what I'm going through right now. Why would you wanna go through more? Put your family and your kids and everybody through that. That's crazy. It's not God, it's us getting ahead of them. You'll get more wet if you run in the rain. You're going to run into that depression. You're going to run into that sin. You're going to run into everything that's going to blind you. You're going to run and you're going to get lost. And Jesus says, I'm still there to catch you. I refuse to get, get out of the covering. And that's what this church is. This church is like a mobile tent. It's like a mobile umbrella. It's like a mobile vehicle just ready to cover you everywhere that you go, saying the enemy's not going to get you right now. The enemy refuses refuses to back down while we're still here guys if he's out there doing push-ups i'm here and you're doing push-ups push-ups and proverbs every day i'm ready to walk this thing out with god who's ready to walk this thing out with god today amen let's not get ahead of god guys let's truly do this i got one last point to make guys when it came to the disciples again remember how sometimes it's not a faith problem it's like a memory problem I feel like why it's not a faith problem, it's a memory problem, is because it's like we have spiritual amnesia. And that's what I'm calling it. We forget the things that God's done in the past for us. The disciples forgot what Jesus and God have already done before. You see what I'm saying? Like we forgot that Jesus restored us five years ago. We forget what Jesus did for our kid. Or we forgot that Jesus took that needle out of our arms, even if it was two weeks ago. He did it. It's gone. In Jesus' mighty name. It lives no more. Thank God Jesus brought me back to my family and gave me another chance. If God doesn't give you any other blessing, if he doesn't give us anything else from this point on forward, we should still be grateful and praise him for who he is. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for not being a God of halfway. He says, I'm not just going to cover half. I'm not just going to cover a little bit. I'm going to cover you fully. Amen. I pray that you stop having spiritual amnesia. You don't forget the blessings and things that God's done with this. So uh, my last point was uh, walk this out with God. Don't run, guys. And what we want to do here at Rise is we want to walk this out with you. We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We want to find out your gifting. We want to find out your calling. We want to get to know you and build a relationship with you. Church is going to open up June 14th. I don't want you to run into all these crazy things and hear this message. And there's going to be a humbling process. That's, that's what God does. But those who humble themselves will be exalted. <laughs> Amen. So I pray that when June 14th ends, for everybody that's in here right now, you're going to have to be the light that reflects and drips that anointing and that message to everybody else. Right now, I'm giving you homework, guys. You're going to have to go home and you're going to have to influence others to know about Jesus and who they are so you can truly provide faith and an understanding so that you can be a covering from someone else who has lost their covering. Amen. Jesus has given it to you, man. He wants you to use it. There's something powerful in you. I proclaim it in Jesus' mighty name in this place. Guys, you can stand to your feet. We're gonna get ready for this, for this beautiful song. And guys, I just wanna to pray to you guys right now and I wanna pray over your families. And 
If y'all can, guys, just everyone lift their hands real quick. I want this to be a sign. When you lift your hands, you're saying that I'm covered. You're saying, God, thank you so much for what you've done in my life. Thank you for what you're doing in my family's life. Lord, we pray that we can take cover underneath you, Lord. And every, every, every trial or tribulation that comes our way, Father, that you got us, that we will not succumb to the enemy, Father, that we will understand that we are the light and not the darkness, and you make the darkness tremble, Father. I pray that we can be the covering for our wives, for our children, that we can be spiritual leaders and heads for our families, God. I pray that we can be covered in this church, Father. You make this place a true powerful covering for us, and no enemy, no distraction, no peace can be stolen, and when the waves and the wind is rocking our boat, God, that you get us back on our path. If you can stop the sun, you can stop the waves, God, then you can stop the depression. You can stop the anxiety. You can stop the suicidal thoughts. You can stop the drugs that have been running through veins in this place, God. You can stop the hurt and the violence in the streets, God. We pray for those afflicted, affected by the pain out there, Lord. They might be protesting the things that are, but we testify the name of Jesus Christ in this place, God. And we lift your name up high, God. We pray for unity out in this world, Lord. We pray for our national leaders, God, and we pray that we can find that in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And all the saints said, amen. Thank you, guys.